Automation on certain aspects of your media server can greatly reduce the stress of maintaining a good media server. In today's video, I wanna talk about step one in automatically maintaining your own media server, and that is secure downloads. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. Like I said, in today's video, we're gonna talk about downloading, but we wanna talk about downloading safely. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, first and foremost, I do not in any way condone any kind of downloading of illegal content. However, if you do wanna download something like, I don't know, an Ubuntu ISO and get the latest distro, something like that, if you do wanna download something like that using a torrent program, your IP address will be public, meaning that anybody can scan your IP and be like, you know, what ports are open, maybe like how, can you get hacked? Okay, the reasoning behind it really isn't that important. The point is, you do not want what you are accessing and when you are accessing it to be public to your ISP. So, cat. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about using a program called Deluge VPN, which is going to be hosted on an Unraid Docker, utilizing a subscription VPN service called NordVPN. The reason why I'm using NordVPN today are a couple reasons. One, I do have an affiliate link with them, so you can get a pretty hefty discount if you use the links in my description down below. Two, I tried this before in the past, but I had issues with NordVPN allowing me to seed. So I just kind of stopped using their affiliate. After NordVPN, I moved over to private internet access. I did a couple setups with them. I tried them out. The speeds sometimes were okay, but being in the Midwest, just my specific location, I never had a great experience with them. Now I also do have an affiliate link with private internet access. However, I've never felt confident enough about their services to make a dedicated video revolving around what their services offer. And since the last time I tried NordVPN, it's been a couple years now, I went back, tried it again, and it seems like everything seems to be working just fine. So now I feel really good about making this tutorial and showing you how to set up your own Unraid server with a Docker to download torrent files and then hiding that activity from your own ISP. So with that said, yes, you can get a pretty good discount using my link down below. It's like $3.35 a month. If you get a two-year plan, it's super cheap and they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you feel safe, can't get it set up, you can get a refund. Okay, moving past all that, let's jump right into this tutorial and let's get into Unraid. The first thing that you have to do to get everything started is to create a new share. This new share is going to be your downloads folder. You're going to want to set it to use your cache drive. And yes, you might need a fairly decent sized cache drive depending on how much stuff you want to download. So in Unraid, go to your shares tab and click create new share. Ow, bitch. Since we're going down this path, you might as well call it downloads. And then you want to set the SMB export to yes. That way you can get in it, browse to it from your computer, and you'll be able to create new folders later on. And by later on, I mean right now. As soon as you're done creating that new share, you want to open up your file explorer, navigate to your new shared directory, and you're going to want to create three new folders. Complete, incomplete, and something like unpackaged, unzipped, uncompressed, somewhere around there. Just you do whatever you want to do, boo. After you have your new downloads folder completed, now we have to install a new application called Deluge VPN. And this is extremely easy to do as long as you have the plugin for Unraid called Community Applications. If you do not have the plugin for Unraid called Community Applications, definitely Google it. There's plenty of details and walkthroughs and everything. It's super simple to install, but you definitely need, if you have Unraid, Community Applications installed. Once you have it and or if you already have it, go to the Apps tab and in the search bar, type in Deluge VPN. On Binhex Deluge VPN, click install. And then when you scroll down on that installation screen, you should see host path two. Now this is your slash data. And this is going to point to the new share that we just created in step one. So you're going to click inside this little box. It's going to have sort of a browser. You're going to want to browse to that new share that you just created. That way the Deluge VPN has complete access to this share only. And then if you scroll down just a little bit further, you should see key four 
as the default VPN provider. Uh, we're going to click that instead of using PIA or the other one, we're going to go ahead and drop it down to custom. Then we're going to scroll down just a little bit to key nine and you're going to see a LAN subnet. Now, here's where you're going to put in your local area network subnet IP address. For me, it's 7.7.7.0 slash 24. Don't forget that 24. I know I have the luckiest network on the planet. It's okay. Don't be jelly. You too can do it too. Boo. Now, before we leave the screen, we do have to insert the NordVPN username and password. Now, before you go typing in your NordVPN email and the password that you created with the website, no, that is not what you put here. Instead, you're going to be logging into your NordVPN account. Once you log into the NordVPN website, you should see services, NordVPN, and then down at the bottom, advanced configuration. Here you should see service credentials, a username and a password. This is a long string and you do not want anyone to know this because then they will be able to use your account. On the right hand side of each one of these boxes, you have the option to copy this to your clipboard. So for the username, copy that. Go back to the unwrite screen, put it in the box that says username, and then repeat that process with the password. Once you have everything in the unwrite screen filled in, scroll down to the bottom, click apply, and now it should install the Deluge VPN service. This screen might take a couple minutes for it to install, and once it done, it will not run. That's perfect. Don't panic. Using the NordVPN services does require you to download a configuration file that you will have to go into your app data folder structure and place manually. To do this, you're going to go to nordvpn.com slash servers slash tools. You should see a default recommended server already pop up with options to download, etc. But we want to make sure we get the right server information for our needs, specifically a peer to peer server that's close to you. So you're going to select the area of which you want to connect to. So United States, for example, then from the next drop down menu, you want to select peer to peer or P2P. And then the last box you want to select open to VPN UDP, you should see two different options UDP TCP. And I'm not the nerdiest of nerds to tell you one is faster than the other. But my in my experience, I've seen the UDP faster than the TCP and sometimes the TCP configuration file doesn't always work. So just trust me, go with UDP and if it doesn't work, go with TCP. Once you've made these selections, it will give you a server. It should give you an option to download this configuration file. You want to browse, copy that file. And then from here, you're going to actually need to get into your app data. For me specifically, I have set up my app data folder to be shared so I could browse it on my local network. It does require an admin password to log into it, but for, it just makes things a lot easier to be able to use Windows Explorer and go into my app data you know, and move files around. So if you can't see your app data files, I definitely recommend you making that change. That way you can easily copy this file over. Now that you have access to your app data, you wanna go into the app data, you wanna go into the deluge and then open VPN. And then you're going to paste this new configuration file into this empty folder. Once that's done, go back to Unraid, go to your main screen and you will see that deluge icon that is not running. Now you can run it. To do so, all you have to do is click on it, a little drop down menu will pop up and you just click start. Now I assume at this point, everything went smoothly. You ran into absolutely no problems whatsoever because I make the absolute best tutorials on the internet. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. If you ran into problems, I can't troubleshoot everything with the video. So I definitely recommend Googling it. And yes, I know I suck. But step number four, Let's go into the web interface that Deluge has through Unraid. So you know how you clicked on that icon for Deluge and you started it. Now that it's started and it shows a green play button on it, you can click it again and you can click on web UI. Deluge will pop up a little window to, to select what you're going to connect to. So you're going to click on the server and click connect. And then after that, it is going to ask you for a password. The password is super simple. It's just Deluge, all lowercase D-E-L-U-G-E. -E. Now that you've logged in, everything seems to be working. The first thing you want to do is test and make sure everything is actually working. And the best way to do that is to download your very first Ubuntu ISO. So go to Google search Ubuntu torrent download, and it should bring you to a website called alternative downloads for Ubuntu. Pick any distro that you want, right click and click copy that link, and then go back to the Duluth screen, click add a new torrent, click URL, and then 
paste in that URL that you just copied from your browser. Once you click add, it should automatically recognize this as a turret. You just click OK, and then boom, Ubuntu should start popping up and it should start downloading. I should note here that with the Ubuntu ISOs, I was usually able to get about 150 to 160 megabits per second download. It's actually like 19 or 20 megabytes per second. I don't know why it calculates it in bytes instead of bits, but hey, doesn't matter here. The point is it's actually fairly decently fast. I'm able to get a little bit faster speeds running multiple ISOs at the same time, but not much. So let's just say 150, 160 megabits per second. At that speed, Ubuntu should download pretty quick. So everything at this point is working great. However, we need to make sure that we have your privacy on the internet secured utilizing that NordVPN service. Now you could easily do this by going to the bottom right hand screen of Deluge and checking the IP address and seeing what it says. If this IP address is different from your normal home IP address, then you're probably good. But you know me, I like to overcomplicate things sometimes and also double check things sometimes as well. So if you go to Google and you type in, what is my torrent IP address? You should come to a search result. I would pick the number two search result, which is actually TorGuard. If you click into the screen, you'll see a giant green button that says download torrent to test your torrent IP address. Instead of downloading that, again, we're gonna right click, we're gonna copy that link, we're gonna go back to Deluge, click and add another torrent, utilizing a URL and then add that. This won't actually really download anything. All it does is initiate a download and this website, this TorGuard website will track what IP address is associated with this very specific torrent file. Once everything is added, you should be able to go back to the TorGuard website. You can see the Deluge app running and the IP address that it sees publicly. Again, if this is the IP address not associated with your home ISP, but rather a foreign IP address to you, AKA a NordVPN IP address, then, well, everything works. So give you a little pat on the back. Or for you, I say, golf clap. Once you verified everything is done, you are good to go and you are set up for our next video, which is going to be probably indexing and downloading automatically TV shows for your own media server. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below or if I got this all finished and you're watching this later on in the future, I will have it in the cards above. I will be talking a little bit about some index managers and sonar and then in the future after that, radar. I, you know, I've never heard of these programs before in my life, but you know, I figured I might as well share them with people. So as always, if you have run into any issues, comments, or if you have any complaints for me, make sure to put those in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.